quick tips. See the description for a timestamps index. YouTube auto subtitles available in English. See notes at the end of the video for extra info. Keep an eye on the visual hints throughout the video. Key shortcuts are displayed at the top right of the screen. Mouse button clicks are shown as colors around the cursor. Yellow and blue for the left and right buttons, respectively. In Paint Shop Pro, most transformations are done with the pick tool. However, resizing is a destructive operation. So the more the adjustments until we get the desired size, the more the degradation of the final result. Today I'll share a workaround about resizing raster layers with the minimum quality loss. Layer resizing is often needed for matching a foreign subject with existing ones in a picture. I have already opened two photographs in Paint Shop Pro. And we'll copy the subject of the second photograph to the first one. Our task will be to match the size of this man, with the size of the people in the other photo. To save us time, I've also isolated the subject, as a separate layer. An easy way to copy the layer, is to drag it with the mouse from the layers palette into the other photo. Like so. We can now rename it, and using the pick tool, we can resize and place it to the desired location. I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, during the process. There it is. However, by looking closer, we clearly see, it has been distorted by a great deal. I'll rename this layer to foreign subject, pick, resized. The distortion resulted from resizing the layer many times, until we got the size we wanted. Every resizing step added more distortion. With the workaround, we resize the layer just once. First let me turn off the tab documents mode. It's a bit easier working with floating windows for this one. Next, I'll drag the resized layer on the workspace, to get a copy of it, as a new image. I only want to check the layer's dimensions. They are shown in the image information, and in the image resize dialogs. I use image resize, because I find its shortcut easier. Shift and S, instead of Shift and I. Take a note of the dimensions, 137 pixels wide. Then cancel the dialog, and close the temporary image. Now, switch to the second image, and drag on the workspace the original layer of the subject. Once again, a copy will be created as a new image. Resize it to the dimensions of the distorted layer, in the first photograph. Feel free to experiment with the resampling algorithm. Usually, smart resize gives the best results. If keep lock aspect ratio is checked, you only need to type 137 in the width field. And the height will be calculated automatically. We can now copy it to the first photo as a new layer. Give it a name, and close the temporary image. This new layer has been resized just once, so the distortion is less apparent. Let's compare the two subjects. In this particular example, the difference is less profound, but we'll see more examples a little later. The outer edges, and especially the inner thighs, show the benefit we get from this workaround. We should now replace the more distorted subject with this, better one. We are going to use the Object Align menu. First we need to select the two layers to be aligned, in a specific order. The old layer must be selected first. Select the layers with the mouse, holding down the Control key at the same time. Next, open the Object menu and select Align Vertical Center. Then open the menu again, and select Align Horizontal Center. 
we can now hide or even delete the old subject. However, I'd like to show you a faster way to align layers, so let me undo the aligning. Let me select the two layers again. Remember, old one first, then the improved one. The tool options bar of the pick tool already contains icons for the object align commands. So we can use those instead. It is faster compared to using the menu. Hide or delete the old layer and we are done. The benefit of the workaround becomes more apparent when we work with small images, like this icon. It is only 78 pixels wide and 82 pixels high. To demonstrate the distortion, I'm going to create a new, full high definition image, 1920 by 1080 pixels. Then I will copy the icon as a new layer. And I'll start resizing and repositioning it several times, using the pick tool. Enlarging a picture beyond its original dimensions, causes more distortions compared to shrinking. I'm doing both here. To check the final dimensions of the resized layer, I'm dragging it on the workspace to get a copy, as a new image. I then open the image size dialog. It is 843 pixels wide. I cancel the dialog, and close the temporary image. Next, I switch to the original icon window, and I resize it to 843 pixels wide. I'm using smart resize for resampling. And I also leave lock aspect ratio checked, so the height gets auto calculated. I can now drag it to the main image as a new layer and rename it. Time to align the two layers, so we can compare them directly. I select them both with the mouse, holding down the control key at the same time. The old layer must be selected first. Then on the pick tool option bar, use the align vertical center and align horizontal center icons. Done. Let me now zoom the window to 100%, so we can compare the two layers. The one that was resized just once, retained more crispness and details. To read this, you may want to pause the video. Pixel distortion is much less apparent in very big images. The more the pixels in the image, the more the distortions the image can take, before this becomes an issue. Resizing is always destructive. Enlarging distorts more compared to shrinking. When using the pick tool, every resizing step accumulates distortion. We're better off resizing to the desired dimensions just once, using the image resize dialog. As an added bonus, we get to choose a resampling method. Thank you for watching.